So I was cut off while I was finishing um, this discussion. So let's finish it again. Okay, um, so we're right here and we've done all the calculations. We know that this point corresponds to a relative min, this point corresponds to a relative max, and then these three points are points of inflection. At the very end of the last video, I plotted those five points, and then we made a sign chart that included signs of Y prime and Y double prime and all the intervals of interest. Um, so we're just trying to graph the function now. We said, okay, on this interval from negative infinity to negative three, the function is decreasing and concave upward. So my graph looks like this, it's concave upward. And if it's on the decreasing side, it's gonna look like that. So that's to the left of negative three, it's gonna look like that left half of that sort of little parabola and sort of facing upward. So I go from negative and or I go from a positive infinity down to negative three to that location. And then on the interval from negative three to two, the graph is still concave upward, but it's increasing. So we're just on the other side of that concave upward parabola. So we're gonna go from here up to that point. Now from negative two to zero, our graph is increasing and concave downward. So that means it's gonna look like this. So I'm gonna draw something that looks roughly like that. And then from zero to two, the function is increasing and concave upward. So it's going to look like that. So it's going to be sort of going up like that. And then on the interval from two to three, the function is increasing and concave downward. So that means we're here and we're on this side. And then from three to infinity, it's decreasing and concave downward. So the graph is going to look like that, roughly. And so that is my function. And this point, negative uh, three, negative uh, 2.8 and this point 3 positive 2.8 correspond to relative mins and relative maxes. The relative min is right here of negative 2.8. The relative max is right there. It's positive 2.8. And these points of inflection are here and here and here. That's where our graph goes from concave upward to concave downward to concave upward to concave downward. So we say the function has a relative min of negative 2.8 at x equals negative 3. And here we say x or the function has a relative max of 2.8 at x equals positive 3. And that is the graph, whoops, happened to my Zoom meeting. And that is the graph of the original function, which was y equals one divided by 270 times, where is my original function? I believe it was negative three X to the fifth plus something. Can't find the rest of it. And there it is. Plus 40 X cubed plus 135 X. Now let's go to desmos.com and make sure that the graph online is consistent with the graph in our picture. Okay, so here was our function. And we found the function values just by typing them in. We did that already. And now we, and then we plotted the points. And the claim is that the function is decreasing and concave upward, increasing and concave upward, increasing and concave downward, increasing and concave upward, decreasing, or excuse me, increasing and concave upward, and then decreasing and concave upward. Um, and I think that's what we see when we look at this graph. Um, now, uh, if we wanted to, we could also look at the points of inflection or look at the graphs of F prime and F double prime 
to see if we can find the um, critical values and points of inflection just using the graph. Um, we computed F prime and then we factored it as much as possible, right? And this is what we got. And um, we said F prime is equal to zero uh, at X equals negative three and X equals positive three. So those were our two critical values. F prime is negative here. So that means the function is decreasing. And then F prime is positive in here. So the function is increasing. And then F prime is negative and on the right of X equals negative three. So the original function should be increasing. Now, if we graph them together, we can see that um, at X equals negative three, we've got a minimum. At X equals a positive three, we have a maximum. And the function goes from decreasing to increasing to decreasing. And that is consistent with what we see here. But um, when we're finding the second derivative, that's gonna tell us something tell us something about the concavity. Now we can infer what the second derivative should be by looking at this graph. We say, okay, well, the second derivative should be zero whenever the derivative has a tangent line of zero. So at the top here, we would have a tangent line whose derivative is zero. Um, at, so in x equals negative two, I, my tangent line would uh, have a derivative or my, my slope, excuse me, would be zero. The tangent line would be horizontal. I, I said that incorrectly. And my tangent line would be horizontal here and here as well. So at x equals negative two, zero, and positive two, I would expect the second derivative to be zero. Now, the second derivative is positive whenever the first derivative is increasing. So the first derivative is increasing on the interval from negative uh, or negative infinity to that negative two. And then it's decreasing from negative two to zero, and then increasing from zero to two, and then decreasing again. Um, so that should um, be reflected in the second derivative graph. So let's look at the second derivative graph now. Is that what we see? Well, it looks like we get a zero here when x equals negative two, and when x equals zero, and when x equals positive two, good, because those correspond to zero slopes. And then the second derivative values are positive when the first derivative is increasing. And the second de derivative values are negative when the first derivative is decreasing. And the second derivative is positive again when that first derivative is increasing. And then when the first derivative is decreasing, the second derivative is negative. So that's exactly what we would expect. And if we wanted to find those x values that correspond uh, to not critical values, but sort of the uh, F double prime equivalent, we would just look for where those uh, where y double prime crosses the x-axis, negative two, zero, and uh, uh, positive two. And we'd say, well, the function is going from concave up to concave down to concave up to concave down, as reflected by the sign of the y values for this green function. If we put those two pieces together, actually, let's ignore the second, the first derivative now. If I add those extra points, we see that the original function is concave upward on the interval from negative infinity to negative two. That graph is concave upward. And then from negative two to zero, it's concave downward. And then from zero to two, it's concave upward and then from two to infinity, it's concave downward. So the original function is consistent with that second derivative. We could have found that all um, by just graphing the functions, graphing f prime and f double prime, and then reading the graphs. But um, I actually like doing the calculations on paper and making sure that I understand like how to do the computations in order to graph it myself. See, when we graphed it ourselves, this is what we got. Oops, can you see it? little bit difficult to see. We had something that's very similar to what we saw online. Uh, concave upward, concave downward, concave upward, concave downward, decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing. Um, all of that is consistent and a relative min and a relative max and three points of inflection. Um, so, so that's that. Uh, that's how we apply the second derivative test. In the next video, we'll look at doing something similar with a function that's not a polynomial, something a little bit more interesting.